just finishing a stretch, a nice stretch uh, from the game and returning to the practice fields. Uh, it would be good to get a, a day off uh, tomorrow, um, get the guys, get their legs back under them and come back out and get ready for L.A. Okay, I haven't watched the film of the game since we talked to you last. What did you see that you really liked about how you played and what did you see you need to work on? Um, you know, for the most part, I think we did a great job of executing uh, the pre-snap procedures. So whether it's uh, calling in and out the right personnel, uh, breaking the huddle with, a, with enough time on the play clock to whether it's make checks or make calls, and we had no false starts or anything like that. So um, the guys are locked in. That shows great discipline right there. Um, did a great job of just moving the ball, uh, getting scoring drives. Of course, we would love more touchdowns from field goals, but um, everything was pretty smooth for the most part. Of course. There's, there are always some areas that you have to improve in, and uh, I think that's why we're here practicing. Coach had mentioned yesterday that it seemed like the team had pretty well. How would you assess yesterday's practice compared to today? Yeah, um, you know, it's camp. So um, there are going to be days that, that feel like camp days, and there are going to be days that you come out here and you feel fresh. So um, it's part of the game. But I know one thing, um, you have to continue to be mentally strong uh, when you do hit that wall. and. Uh, have to know how to fight through and you know find something within that motivates you still. And I think that's what we've been able to do as a team. Uh, guys continue to come to work every day. Uh, like I said, of course, it's camp. Some guys may feel like, hey, man, you know, I'm hitting that wall. But somewhere, somehow, we would find that will, that willpower from deep within and continue to come out here and give it all. So it would be safe to say, like, compared to yesterday, there was more pep in the step in y'all today? Um, I'm, I wasn't really aware of yesterday. Um, but I know today we came out with some energy, guys flying around, and that's exciting to see. Teddy, when you look at the skilled people uh, practicing against the Chargers, you have to look forward to that, going against different DBs and not the same, uh, you know, cornerbacks in the scheme. Stuff. Yeah, it'll be fun, uh, definitely, competing against those guys for a couple of days and getting to, uh, playing a game against those guys. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure our guys are excited to go against uh, – uh, a different color jersey as well. Uh, we've been battling each other and continue to make ourselves better as a, as a team. And you know, sometimes it's great to see where you stand uh, next to the, your opponents. So um, being able to practice against LA for a couple of days would be pretty fun. Teddy, the joint practices compared to the preseason games, do you approach one differently than the other? Is there one where you're like, I'm going to work on this in the practice and do it the game and vice versa? How do you approach each one? Well, you, you always, for me, I'll speak for myself, uh, I always try to approach it with the same mindset. Like every rep is, has to be a game tempo, game speed. And um, I know that with these joint practices, though, uh, you tend to see a little more than what you see in the actual game because, you know, teams don't want to show too much in the preseason games. But uh, it'll be fun just being able to go against different looks and, you know, being able to see what those guys do well and see what areas we have to improve in and see what we do well against some of the, the things that they do well. Teddy, uh, when you throw it to Ted Ginn, how much does he still receive your ring? When you're throwing to him, he stresses your arm maybe a little bit more than other guys based on how he gets down the field. Uh, I mean, when you throw uh, on time and rhythm, uh, it makes playing football much easier. Uh, and Ted's a guy, he understands you know, quarterback progressions. He understands the drops that the quarterback is taking. So he does a great job of setting up routes to time up with our feet. So uh, you know, he is a guy who can fly, and you love to have that kind of guy in this offense. So um, you, know, you have to know that, hey, when you have a, a play call to Ted, you have to be ready to throw it. Are you surprised he can still run that fast at his age? Not at all. Uh, Ted, he's a guy who, you know, he has that natural ability to just run. So. As a quarterback, I mean, you've played with some pretty good receivers in your career, but what do you look for in a receiver in your school set that makes them a great receiver? Yeah, um, for the most part, you want a guy who, who's a smart football player, who understands and who's able to adjust on the fly because as he's running routes, things are happening in front of him. The defense may be changing. There may be, there may be rotation with the, with the safeties and things like that. So a smart football player is aware of those those changes that are happening within the play and know how uh, to be in the right place at the right time. So a guy who understands what the defense is doing, a guy who understands the quarterback's progression, you know, those are special players. A lot of that is like the technical stuff for players to say, but like how, how important is the chemistry and rapport between a quarterback and a wide receiver? for him to take that next level to greatness? Well, it's very important. Um, you know, you, 
you can't play the game if you don't have the chemistry. Um, and that's why we have, you know, different periods of the year where we, we get to work on building that chemistry and that timing, whether it's in the spring during OTAs or right now in training camp.